This plate with some, such as MLA for Chilliwack, Hope, and Roy Thornton seem to think WorkSafe is not just a large insurance company. It is a Crown Corporation under operating under the special protection more than other Crown Corporations receive of the BC Legislature to not only insure employers against being sued for injury to their employees in the workplace, it is also mandated to support a safe work environment for all workers in the workplace and also support workers that unfortunately do get injured in the workplace. They seem to have fulfilled the first part of their mandate of protecting employers from being sued for injuries in the workplace. BC ranks among the worst in terms of workplace accidents and injuries in Canada, and with thousands of injured workers denied claims in BC, one cannot say they are even close to fulfilling the rest of their mandate. Reflecting on the review of MLA Thornson, one wonders if it is his desire to return BC to worsen the pre-1891 working conditions when the Employer's Liability Act was enacted. This time, the employer is to protect it, and the injured worker, well, they are on their own and should be punished for the rest of their life for being injured on the job. Fortunately, Judge Gill and his Royal Commission on Workers' Compensation had a much more enlightened view on the many-faceted roles of WorkSafe and the responsibility to those injured workers. The news release accompanying the Royal Gill Royal Commission on Workers' Compensation released January 1999 opens with, while British Columbia Workers' Compensation System deserves praise for its fiscal responsibility, the Workers' Compensation Board of British Columbia has lacked direction from its Board of Governors and has failed in its mandate to administer fair and equitable benefits to injured workers, often those in most in need of assistance. After allowing for the various actual set sides, the almost $1 billion profit in 2015 would certainly indicate prudent use of financial resources continue. But thousands of injured workers in BC are aware of WorkSafe has made little, if any, progress in delivering on its mandate to administer fair and equitable benefits to injured workers. A recent Freedom of Information request to WorkSafe, WorkSafe noted they do not have a comprehensive record of injured workers that were not satisfied with the way their claim was handled. The incomplete record they can supply indicates thousands every year and appears the number of dissatisfied injured workers is increasing. In the last two months, two Supreme Court rulings did not find in favor of WorkSafe BC. The Fraser Health Authority v. Workers' Compensation Appeal Tribunal, the Supreme Court of Canada found against WorkSafe in a variety of points the most significant being the standard of proof required to support an injury. The standard of proof required, according to the Supreme Court of Canada, is less than the civil burden. In other words, the applicable burden of proof is not the civil burden of balance of probabilities. Where the evidence leads to a draw, the finding must favor the worker. In the past few months, I have heard from far too many workers speaking about the high level of proof required. In my own case, the level of proof required has far exceeded the civil burden. Even the criminal burden, even meeting the scientific burden of proof, has not been enough to support a claim. WorkSafe has demonstrated that in the years since the last Royal Commission chaired by Judge Grimm Singh Gill, the Gill Commission, WorkSafe is still struggling with one of the concerns the Commission noted. The WSB handles straightforward claims relatively well but often does a poor job with more difficult or complex claims in their press release accompanying the release of the report of the Gill Committee. The Fraser Health Authority v. Workers' Compensation Appeal Tribunal taking 15 years to reach a conclusion is a continuation of another concern of the Gill Commission. The appeal process is a complex, open-ended maze beyond comprehension, a treadmill inadvertently designed to frustrate and demoralize participants. For an injured worker, the indecision in battle is far longer than just a simple count of the years waiting to be treated fairly. Far too many injured workers have reported to me serious issues with depression and even suicidal thoughts. One wonders how many injured workers have succumbed to suicide when the process demoralizes them beyond their ability to withstand. A recent BC Supreme Court decision speaks to WCAT's interpretation of new evidence. One should not think of the WCAT as an independent tribunal when their funding comes from WorkSafe. 100% of the workload is from WorkSafe and many other key personnel from WorkSafe. 
is a D.C. Supreme Court ruling that speaks to many of the issues related to how WorkSafe and WCAT deal with the admissibility of evidence. The Gill Commission noted the Commission recommends minimizing the opportunity for the appellate bodies to create or change policy. Where necessary, the Board of Governors must react quickly, 90 days, to decide cases of policy that are considered illegal. WCAT not only changes policy at will, it could also be said they create their own policies of convenience when needed. The earlier Erskine versus WCAT decision could, should be considered to be a forerunner to the issues around the admissibility of new evidence. A recent request to the Auditor General to conduct a full audit into the activities at Works APC has met with the response that the Auditor General's office does not have the authority to conduct an audit of WorkSafe BC. The Assistant Deputy Minister responsible for WorkSafe was asked who is responsible to audit WorkSafe's activities, responded that WorkSafe is audited by the Auditor General, as can be seen in their annual report. True, the AG does a simplified version of an audit of little more than the basic finances. It does not appear to have the authority to do a full and complete audit of WorkSafe. That function if performed, is possibly done by the occasional Royal Commission. The last Royal Commission noted, Never again should an important part of our business and social fabric be allowed to go to loan for so long, explained Gill. If the workers' compensation system and WCB had been reviewed on a regular basis, this Commission's work would not have taken so long, and the recommended changes would not have been so extensive. Judge Gill specifically stated 30 years is too long an interval between reviews. Assuming any review will take in the order of two years, the soonest the next Royal Commission can be completed is 2018, or 19 years after the previous Commission, disturbingly close to the unacceptable 30-year interval. Regular comprehensive review should be at least every five years. WorkSafe prepares a five-year plan, and it should be reviewed regularly. With the number of issues at WorkSafe, from the Salmon Fires issue through the many other injured worker denied claims, an annual, and as some have suggested, a data review of WorkSafe would not be out of order until they make significant progress and comply with as judges. Gill noted, if they complied with the mandate to administer fair and equitable benefits to injured workers, often those most in need of assistance.